Saya Minister Scala, Toronto Congregation. Again, it's Sabbath. It's the most important day of the week. Today we celebrate God's appointed times, and also it's good to. Uh, I'd like to also to welcome those who are watching us live online over the internet and those who are attended here in show to join us in worshiping the Lord. I would like to welcome everyone from our fellow Messianic believers from uh, South America, from Southeast Asia, from Europe, and from the rest of the world. Shabbat Shalom. I would like to ask one of our elders to uh, lead us in congregational prayer. If you have any uh, prayer requests or praise report, please uh, share it with us so we can pray with you. Shabbat Shalom. I'm very grateful that we have a lot of visitors today. It's okay. And certainly the reason for being a remnant is because the Lord's desire to call individually one person each day, one day at a time, I guess. But I'm grateful for that because people are gradually being called and people are being aware of the call of the Sabbath and the call of the commandments of God. And I could see, uh, I could see it differently in different places, but it takes time. But we cannot also condemn our, 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 or put a kick in their, in their teeth that they were, uh, they were, you know, that they are wrong. I was, I must admit that, that there was something like that before, but now each of us is given a task to bring out the truth to them. Only God's desire to open up their eyes. It's not our desire, it's, it's not our efforts to open up. It's always the God's desire to open up. But anyway, any, uh, any uh, blessings this week? Uh, any uh, requests for, for uh, prayers? Prayer request for my mother who are, uh, uh, he went, she went to a specialist last week and uh, the, they said it might be a Parkinson's disease so they got to put more tests on her. Okay. Well, that's, uh, we'll pray for it. Praise report from my... But uh, she's, 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 now, she's now, you know, doing the, the Le Leviticus 11? Mm. Oh, good. Yeah, good. Uh, there's mm. no choice. The Indeed, food, I mean, I, I, I myself, when I was, when I was, when I was, I was. Um, I buy the food at home. Yeah, but you have to, you have to, because if you are really uh, taking to heart the commandments of God, yes, go ahead. Do you have a f prayer request? Yes, fantastic. Wow. Okay. Uh, Cindy, right? Cindy? Yeah, okay. And um, when I was on the other side of town, so to speak, uh, sometimes I, I permit certain foods that are, that are, you know, that are abominable before God. That I didn't know until now, because most of the sickness of the people is because they violated the food commandments of the Lord. There is unclean and unclean food. And once we realize the, the, the uncleanness once you realize the principle behind those unclean foods, we will. We, we, uh, people will realize why they are sick or something like that. Anyway, so uh, any praise report, my dear friend? Praise report to my uncle. It's getting better. Wow. It's getting better now. Uh, so like the do any try a triathlon uh, race? <laughs> yeah. Well, we we. Anyway. Let's uh, bow our head and we'll continue right away because we're kind of late. Avina Malkina, we thank thee for your presence always on the Shabbat. You are the creator of heaven and earth. We praise thee for all the things that you have done on the cross for us. And without that cross, there is no chance for us to be revived or to be saved. Lord, we thank you for the opportunities that you had given to, for, for, medical discovery for the uh, mother of Eric. And soon, uh, with, with the uh, restrictions that you have placed on each and every one about food, Lord, we do hope that she will recover soon. We thank you also for blessing uh, Cindy here, the wife of Michael. We hope that you would grant her wish to, be re to recover right away, O oh Lord. 
for those things that are affecting her so that she can continue her work and her witness. Lord, we thank you for the presence of other individuals in our ministry in, in our Honduras, in, in India, in the Philippines. We know that a, a remnant is a remnant, O oh Lord, but we thank you for calling us to be part of that remnant. We thank you again for this wonderful time to be with you during Shabbat. In these things we ask in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. Amen. As you rise from bowing before the Lord, the first of all blessings, the brakot is recited. The braka of blessings always begin with the giving of thanks to God. Barhu et Adonai Hambora Bless the Lord, the Blessed One. Amen. The Lord said on Mount Sinai to honor our fathers and mothers so that we may receive long life. Through our father Abraham, the Messiah came so that we may receive eternal life and life abundantly here on earth. Barukatah Adonai Eloheinu Belohei Abuteinu Elohe Abraham, Elohe Yitzhak, Belohe Yaku. Ahel Hagadol, Hagabo, Yamora, Elio, Gomel Kasadim Tobim, Bikone Hako, Pisoker Kaste Abu. O my be Gohel, Libne Binehem, the man. Shimo ba ba, Melek oser o masheya o magen, Melek oser o masheya o magen, Barukata hadunai, Barukata hadunai, Magen Abraham, Barukata hadunai, Barukata hadunai, Magen Abraham. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, and God of our fathers, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob, the great, mighty, and awesome God, the most high God, who bestows grace and creates all, and remembers the righteousness of the fathers, and brings Redeemer to the children's children, for his name's sake with love. O King, Helper, Savior, and Shield, blessed are you, O Lord, the Shield of Abraham. Amen. Amen. Along with the many traditional brachot or blessings, we have a new covenant bracha, thanking God for giving us the way of salvation in our Messiah, Yeshua. The blessing of our Messiah. Baharuk, Baharuk Atta. Baruk Atta Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Natan Lanu Et Derek HaYashua Bemashiach Yeshua Amen Blessed are you, O Lord our God, the King of the universe, was given us the way of salvation in Messiah Yeshua. Amen. Let us now face the east as we recite the cry of Israel, the Shema. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kibod Malhuto leolam vaed. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. Blessed is the name of his glorious kingdom for all eternity. Amen. Let us now recite the two greatest commandments that we have ta. We have ta et Adonai Elohecha, Bikolebekaha. 
ובי כל נפשך, ובי כל מאודיך, בי היו הוא הדברים האלה, אשר אנוקים אסבחך, היום הלבביך, ושניתן לבניך בדברת אהבם, ושבתיקה בתיקה ובלתיקה בדרך, ובשבקה ובקומך. וכשאתן להיות על ידיך, והיו לתותפות, והנה נקה וכתבתם, על מסוסות בתיקה ובשעריקה. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And have these words which I command you today be upon your heart. And you shall teach them diligently to your children, and speak of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you retire, and when you rise. And you shall bind them for a sign upon your hand, and let them be frontlets between your eyes. And you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and upon your gate. And the second greatest commandment is, Bihabta lareka kamocha. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. It's now time for our children to come forward and receive blessings. We bless our children and pray for God's protection over them. And as we draw them under the talit, it is a physical sign of a spiritual truth representing how God is our covering. So today is Sabbath, and uh, although, although we are only few here in the shul, and yet don't be discouraged, and we are making impact in the world. And it's also a test, that's correct. And I, we thank, I thank God for the faithfulness that bestowed on us and the leaders of this congregation. Even though we discourage every Sabbath, but, uh, you know, but still they gave us faithfulness and wisdom opening our eyes and still share the world, the word to the world. And uh, I, I just, I'm encouraged also by our children who comes here every summer as well, especially you, Ruth, yes. who always give us good uh, uh, memory, uh, mem memory verse, <laughs> who shared those memory verse. And it's learning and uh, I admire your, your parents because uh, they, they teach you the, uh, the commandments of the Lord, the statutes. So, your guidance, I hope that uh, uh, as a parent, uh, the Lord will continue to uh, you know, guide us as well. And also, uh, there's a coming uh, feast this December. You know what is that? Anokasi. Huh? Your father taught you well. That's right. Although the rest of the world is celebrating different festival, but us as messianic believers, we don't celebrate that. that. We celebrate what is uh, biblically mandated feast of the Lord. And uh, this come December, although it's not written in the uh, Old Covenant, but our Savior Yeshua practice it and observe it, which is the Hanukkah. Okay? What's your memory verse for today? From the book of Jasher or... Uh, Book of Jubilee. <laughs> Memory verse, yeah. Psalms 119, verse 11. I have hidden your word in my heart, so I may not sin against you. Very good. It's a nice word. Let's uh, continue the blessings. Although we have no sons here today, but uh, there are sons watching us live online, so we also say the blessings for our sons. Isam Simka Elohim, Kepraim, Hasinose, may God make yourself a favor, Manasseh. For our daughter, we say, 
Isimek Elohim, Kiribka, Rebecca, Rachel Bileya. May God make you a Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful day. Thank you, Lord, for the faithfulness of our believers who came to us to worship with you, those also watching us live over the Internet. We pray that you're going to bless this day, O oh Lord, because this is also your day. Continue to pray that you open our eyes and make us a good parents to our children who come here every Sabbath. Thank you, Lord. We praise you and we love you. This we pray in the mighty name of our Savior, Yeshua Messiah. Amen. 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 We will continue worshiping the Lord through the reading of His Word. The Pasha for today is still from the book of Genesis, chapter 28, all the way to chapter 32. The Pasha for today is also from the same book, but it's from verse, oh no, sorry, is it Deuteronomy? Yahamud yon Abraham la Torah. The blessing before the reading of the Torah. Barhu et Adonai hambora. Baruch Adonai Hambura Leholam Bahid, Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Bakar Banu Mekol Hamim, Binatan Lanu Et Torato, Baruch Ata Adonai Noten HaTorah, Amen. Bless the Lord, the Blessed One. Bless the Lord, the Blessed One for all eternity. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, the King of the Universe, who has chosen us from all people. And giving us his Torah. Blessed are you, O Lord, the giver of the Torah. Amen. It should be Genesis, right? Yeah. We will be reading from Genesis chapter 28, 10 to 22. Jacob, Yaakov, went out to Beersheba and went toward Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there all night because the sun had set. He took one of the stones of the place and put it under his head and lay down in that place to sleep. He dreamed, behold, the stairway set upon the earth and its top reached to heaven. Behold, the angels of Elohim ascending and descending on it. Behold, the Lord stood above and said, I am Yahweh, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land whereon you lie, to you will I give it and to your seed. Your seed will be as the dust of the earth, and you will spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south, in you, and in your seed will all the families of the earth be blessed. Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you again into this land. For I will not leave you until I have done that which I have spoken to you. And Jacob awakened out of his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I didn't know it. He was afraid and said, How dreadful is this place. There is none other than God's house and this is the gate of heaven. Jacob rose up early in the morning and took the stone that he had put under his head and set it up for a pillar and poured oil on top of it. He called the name of the place Bethel, but the name of the city was loose at first. Jacob vowed a vow saying, if God will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go, 
and will give me bread to eat and clothing to put on so that I come again to the Father's house in peace and the Lord will be my God. Then this stone will I set up for a pillar will be God's house. Of all that you will give me, I will surely give a tenth to you. That's the word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. The blessing after the reading of the Torah. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam asher natan lano Torah emet bikai olam natabit okeinu Baruch ata Adonai no tein ha Torah Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, the King of the universe, who has given us a Torah of truth and has planted eternal life in our midst. Blessed are you, O Lord, the giver of the Torah. The Haftarah reading is from the book of Hosea, chapter 12, verse 13, all the way to chapter 14, verse 10. Blessing before the reading of the Haftarah. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Mehelek Haolam Asher Bakar Bin Bim Tobim Tretsa Bedirahem Anehemarim Bemet Baruch Atah Adonai Haboker Batorah O be Moshe Abdo, O be Israel Amo, O be in Baye Hamet, but Sedek. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, the King of the universe, who selected good prophets and was pleased with the words which were spoken truthfully. Blessed are you, O Lord, who chooses the Torah, your servant Moses, your people Israel, and prophets of truth and righteousness. Amen. Amen. Hosea chapter 12, verse 13 to chapter 14, verse 10. By a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt, and by a prophet, he has preserved. Ephraim provoked him to anger most bitterly. Therefore, his Lord will leave the guilt of his bloodshed upon him and return his reproach upon him. When Ephraim spoke trembling. He exalted himself in Israel. But when he offended through Baal worship, he died. Now they sin more and more and have made for themselves molded images, idols of their silver according to their skill, and all of it is the work of craftsmen. They say of them, let the men who sacrifice kiss the cubs, Therefore, they shall be like the morning cloud and like the early dew that passes away, like a shaft blown off from a threshing floor and like a smoke from a chimney. Yet I am the Lord your God ever since the land of Egypt, and you shall know no God but me, and there is no Savior beside me. I knew you in the wilderness, in the land of great drought. When they had pasture, they were filled. They were filled, and their heart was exalted. Therefore, they forgot me. So I will be to them like a lion, like a leopard by the road, and I will lurk. <coughs> I will meet them like a bear, deprived of her cubs. I will tear open their rib cage, and there I will devour them like a lion, and the wild beast shall tear them. O Israel, you are destroyed, but your help is from me. I will be your king, where is any other that he may save you in all your cities and your judges to whom you said, give me a king and princess. I gave you a king in my anger and took him away in my wrath. The iniquity of Ephraim is bound up. His sin is stored up. The sorrows of a woman in childbirth shall come upon him. He is an unwise son. And he should not stay long where children are born. I will ransom them from the power of the grave. I will redeem them from the death. O death, I will be your, your plagues. O grave, I will be your destruction. Pity is hidden from my eyes. 
though he is faithful among his brethren, an east wind shall come. And the wind of the Lord shall come up from the wilderness, and the spring shall become dry, and his mountain shall be dried up, and shall plunder the treasury of every desirable prize. Samaria is held guilty, for she has rebelled against her God, and they shall fall by the sword. Their infants shall be dashed in pieces, and their women with child ripped open. Chapter 14, verse 1. O Israel, return to the Lord your God, for you have stumbled because of your iniquity. Take words with you and return to the Lord. Say to him, take away all iniquity. Receive us graciously, for we will offer the sacrifices of our lips. Assyria shall not save us. We will not ride on horses, nor will we say any more to the work of our hands. You are our God. <clears throat> For in you the fatherless find mercy, and I will heal their backsliding. I will love them freely. For my anger has turned away from him, and I will be like the dew to Israel, and shall grow like the lily, and strengthen his roots like Lebanon. His branches shall spread his beauty shall be like an olive tree, and his fragrance like Lebanon. Those who dwell under his shadow shall return, and they shall be revived like rain, and grow like a vine. Their scent shall be like the wine of Lebanon. Ephraim shall say, What shall I to do any more with idols? I have heard and observed him. I am like a green cypress tree. Your fruit is found in me. Who is wise? Let him understand these things. Who is prudent? Let him know them. For the ways of the Lord are right, and the righteous walk in them, but transgressors stumble in them. The word of the Lord. Amen. The blessing after the Haftara reading. Baruch HaTadonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlaham Tor kol halomim, tadek bikol hadorot, ha'el anehem man, ha'omer v'oseh, hanim reyam kemeh, shikol di barahab, emet batzideh, nehem mahan, atahu Adonai Eloheinu, ben amanim di barecha, bila barekat mit barecha, akol ayahob rekehem, ki el melek nehem man, birachaman hatah, Baruch Ata Adonai, Ahel Anemahan, Bikol Divarab. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, the King of the universe, rock of all eternities, faithful in all generations, the trustworthy God, who says and does, who speak and make it come to pass. All of his words are true and righteous. Faithful are you, O Lord our God, and faithful are your words. For not one word of yours is turned back unfulfilled. For you are a faithful and compassionate God and King. Blessed are you, O Lord, the God who is faithful in all in his words. Amen. The brief Kadasha reading is from the book. John chapter 1, verses 19 to 51. The blessing before the reading of the brief Kadasha. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haulam. Asen atan lanu masyak Yeshua Bihadibrot shel habrita kadasya Baruch ata Adonai Notin habrita kadasya Amen Blessed are you, O Lord our God, the King of the universe Who has given us Messiah Yeshua And the commandments of the new covenant Blessed are you, O Lord, the giver of the new covenant Amen And this is the witness of Jews sent to him priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? And he confessed and did not deny. And he confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then are you, Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you the prophet? And he answered, No. They said then to him, Who are you? So that we may give an answer to those who send us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am a voice of one crying in the wilderness. 
make straight the way of the Lord, as I said, the prophet said. Now they had been sent from the palaces, and they asked him and said to him, Why then are you baptizing if you are not the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, saying, I baptize in water, but among you stands one whom you do not know. It is he who comes after me, the thong of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. These things took place in Bethany beyond the Jordan, where Yochanan was baptizing. The next day he saw Yeshua coming to him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he on behalf of whom I said, After me comes a man was a higher rank than I, for he existed before me. And I did not recognize him, but in order that he might be manifested to Israel, I came baptizing in water. And Yochanan bore witness, saying, I have beheld the Spirit descending as a dove out of heaven, and he remained upon him. And I did not recognize him, but he who sent me to baptize in water said to me, he upon whom you see the Spirit descending and remaining upon him, this is the one who baptizes in the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and have borne witness that this is the Son of God. Again, the next day, Yochanan was standing with two of his disciples. And he looked upon Yeshua as he walked and said, Behold, the Lamb of God. And the two disciples heard him and they followed Yeshua. And Yeshua turned and beheld them following and said to them, What do you seek? And they said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? And he said to them, Come, and you will see. They came therefore and saw that he was staying, and they stayed with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. One of the two who heard Yochanan speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He found first his own brother Simon and said to him, We found the Messiah. He brought him to Yeshua. Yeshua looked at him and said, You are Simon, the son of Yochanan, and you shall be called Cephas. The next day he purposed to go forth into Galilee, and he found Philip. And Yeshua said to him, Follow me. Now Philip, from Bethsaida, of the city of Andrew and Peter, Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him, of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Yeshua of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said to him, Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Yeshua saw Nathanael coming to him and said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no guile. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Yeshua answered and said to him, People Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God, you are the King of Israel. Yeshua answered and said to him, Because I said to you that I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe you shall see greater things than this? And he said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, you shall see the heavens open and the angels of God ascending and descending, ascending and descending on the Son of Man. The word of the Lord. The blessing after the reading of the Brit Kadasha. Baruch Hata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Natan Lanu Harivar Hamet Dikai Olam Natabi Tokhinu Baruch Hata Adonai No Teng Habrit Kadasha Amen Blessed are you, O Lord our God, the King of the Universe Who has given us the word of truth And has planted life everlasting in our midst Blessed are you, O Lord, the 
giver of the new covenant. Amen. Please be seated. Our speaker for today is one of our elders who we'll discuss about Christianity. for today is one of our elders. They want elders anyway. <laughs> Let's talk about the partial for today. Brother D. Richard Dilborn. Yeah, your slide is, is up. If your slide is up, then we discuss this. Can you see me in your slide? Yeah, I do. So why do you see? All right, let us pray. Avino Malkainor, Father and our King, we thank you, O Lord, for giving us this time and opportunity that uh, we can come in prayer. We thank you for this day. We thank you for the blessing. We thank you for this opportunity that we can come before you to worship you in spirit and in truth. Heavenly Father, we uh, pray that may your spirit be upon us and may you um, open our art, hearts and mind that we can understand your will so that we will continue to walk in the path of righteousness, the path of life, through Yeshua HaMashiach, our Adonai. We pray this. Amen. <coughs> huh? No, I sent it to Jim and Robbie. I can send it to you. All right, so we will be discussing the, uh, the Parsha for this week, which is uh, Bayetzi, meaning uh, Jacob or Hila. <coughs> and um, due to technical difficulties, we will not have our usual slides, but uh, we will continue to proceed with with the message. Now, Bayetzi is a Hebrew word for, and he left, referring to Jacob um, leaving his family. It is the first word in the Parsha, and it is the seventh weekly Torah portion in the annual Jewish cycle of Torah reading. <clears throat> it covers the passages between Genesis 28.10 to 32.3, and this Parsha narrates Jacob's trouble to life in and return from Haran. <clears throat> it recounts Jacob's dream of a ladder to heaven, Jacob's encounter of Rachel at the well, and Jacob's time working for Laban and living with Rachel and Leah, the birth of Jacob's children, and the departure of Jacob's family from Laban. 
Now, Parsha Bayetsi is made up of 7,512 Hebrew letters, 2,021 Hebrew words, and 148 verses that can occupy about 235 lines in the Torah scroll, known as the Sefer Torah. Now, again, I would like to e emphasize the reason why the Hebrew people are counting the Hebrew letters and the Hebrew words and the verses and how they are actually written to make sure that there is no extra letter or word or passage that will come in to the, to the, to the passage that will make it the, or that will refer it to a different meaning. Because the Lord said nobody should add or subtract from his word. Unlike English translations, <coughs> you, people have been adding or subtracting or rephrasing the, the scripture to make it, you know, um, appear as something else or whatever is what, whatever it is, or gramma, to make it grammatically correct, as they say. But in Hebrew, it has to be exact. Now, in traditional Sabbath reading uh, the Torah of the Torah, the Parsha is divided into seven readings. It is divided per day, uh, known as Aliyot. In the Masoretic text of the Tanakh, uh, Bayetzi is unusually in that it is entirely contained in one single open portion, uh, roughly equivalent to a paragraph open abbreviated with a Hebrew letter Pe. And within a single open portion of Parashat Bayatsi does not have any closed portion uh, or division abbre uh, abbreviated with a Hebrew letter Samet. <coughs> now, we will be discussing Bayatsi, and it's, um, it's uh, sad that we don't have the actual uh, presentation. Hopefully, it, it will be catch we can catch up. But uh, I divided the topic into its acronym. Bayetzi, uh, V A Y E T Z E, V for the vision of Jacob, A for the adoration for Adonai, referring to our Lord, Y the yardstick of testing, E for endearment for Rachel, T tricks for La tricks of Laban. Z or Z, zinging qualities of Jacob, and E, escape with great wealth, or the escape of Jacob with great wealth. So it's by yet C. It's seven points. <clears throat> now, letter V, the vision of Jacob. Genesis 28, 10 to 15 narrates the events surrounding Jacob's vision. As it is written, Jacob to a certain came to a certain place and stayed there for that night, which is in verse 11 of Genesis 28. The Hebrew passage indicates that Jacob did not just happen upon a random place, but rather he came to the place. So there is a grammatical um, a point that the Hebrew text is implying. It did not just, it did not just happen that he was on that place. He actually came to the place. Uh, in Hebrew, it is known as Bayifa uh, Bamakom. <clears throat> now, the sages notices why the Torah used Bamakom, the place, instead of Vimakom. So it's almost the same, but the other one is a place. A place is a random, the place, is a specific one. It's, it's, um, it refers to a particular place, a specific place. And in, in, the, in um, the, the sages are wondering why, you know, he's just walking and he came to a place, supposedly, and has to rest. But the, the gr grammar that has been used is ba uh, makom, rather than ve makom. So meaning, it is alluding to the belief that Jacob's stop was not by chance, but a divine appointment. It was meant that they should meet that day, that night. Now, furthermore, 
The Hebrew word makom or place comes from the verb kum, which means to arise. And in Jewish tradition, hamakom became a name referring to God. And Jacob's dream of ladder referred to as Solam Yaakov, or Jacob's ladder, is the colloquial name for a connection between earth and heaven. So these are not just ordinary things. Without understanding the Hebrew perspective, we will be missing a lot of things. Now people may ask, what if I don't know Hebrew? Well, then understand as far as you can go. Now, as you go matured in the faith, we start to actually seek deeper meaning of, of the words or, or of the passage. It's, it, that, it just doesn't appear as an ordinary story. We have to understand that there are things into that. Now, <clears throat> It is also deemed as a revelation of the coming glory of the resurrected Messiah. The Jacob's ladder or Jacob's dream of, of a ladder is actually deemed or believed to be a revelation of the coming glory of the resurrected Messiah. Even Messiah Yeshua spoke about this in John chapter 1, verse 51. We read this in our Brit Kadasha um, reading earlier, read by our um, uh, brother Eric. And he saith unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter you shall see heaven open, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. What Jacob saw was something that is relevant to what Yeshua was saying. Jacob saw angels are ascending and descending, and God is above it. So who did, Yeshua, who did Jacob really saw? If Yeshua was saying in John chapter 1, verse 51, that you will see heaven open, and angels are ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Therefore, what Jacob saw in the same dream was actually what Yeshua was saying. He saw Yeshua in his glory. Do you understand this? It's the same. Remember? The story, he saw a ladder going to heaven. And angels are ascending and descending. And above that was God. And Yeshua said in John 1 51, <clears throat> Verily, verily, I say unto you, therefore you shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. It is one and the same. All right? Now, the day of Jacob's, um, the day of Jacob's vision, so I think we have the, um, it's done. Oh, um, let me do it from here. Okay, so this is what we have, and this. Okay. Now, the day of Jacob's vision is deemed to be a Shabbat for the following reasons. Now, <clears throat> again. If, if we don't really dig deeper or try to understand what is going on and we just treat this as a plain story and move on, then we miss the point, right? <clears throat> now, the, the passage makes it appear that the event is actually a Shabbat. First, Jacob rested at sundown. The key word is the sundown. The Shabbat is observed from sundown of Friday to just before sundown of Saturday. So the moment it is the word sundown, 
in the scripture, it refers to a Shabbat. Now, even if we argue logically, why did Jacob have to rest on sundown when it would have been better for him to, con to have continued the journey for a few more hours to take advantage of the coolness of the night? Remember, this is a desert. So you cannot travel at the very you know, hot day and the coolness of the early evening would actually give him advantage to walk as far as he can, you know, as long as he can before the next day again. Okay? Second one, the allusion of the Hebrew word yifga, he came, pertaining to the divine appointment, thus it was Shabbat. It is believed that God only speaks to his people on his appointed time. Uh, we we'd we'd discussed this uh, many times. God does not talk to his people in any random day. That is why even Yeshua, you will see him talking always on the Shabbat. Healing people, talking to people on the Shabbat, on the feasts. Because he only speaks, you know, on his appointed time. And you will see that even farther in all the scriptures, whenever they give time and date and whatever, check it out, it is Shabbat or new moon or feast. The third one, the ascending and descending of ministering angel is believed to be similar to the replacement ceremony of the priest in the temple times. Contrary to the belief of some the of many theologians, the, the priests and the Levites, are, they do not work full time. They only work once a week, uh, no, sorry, uh, one week every six months. They're, they had been divided into 24 divisions. And that 24 division, they will have to, um, um, have to work on the Shabbat. Uh, one example is Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist, who belongs to the eighth division, which is the division of Abijah. So for one week, from one Shabbat to just before the Shabbat, they will work. And then the next time they will come is after the 24th cycle, which is after six months. Because there are about 48 uh, uh, cycles in, 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 um, in, in the year of, of a lunar, lunar year. Um, however, they will also come back on the feasts because they have to be full force uh, during the feast because it is needed. So <clears throat> what is happening is that on the, on the time of the, of, the, of the Shabbat, the new priests will be coming and the new Levites, new groups of Levites of certain division will come. And the division starts with Nisan 1, the beginning of the calendar year of the Hebrew people. The first division will come on Nisan 1 up to Nisan 7. And then the next division, this division 2, will come on, on Nisan 8 to uh, 14, and so forth and so on. <clears throat> now, what is on earth is a reflection in heaven. So angels are also being replaced as ministering angels. They do not stay like for eternity until humankind are, you know, are still here. They are being replaced as well. Um, <clears throat> that's why they are ascending and descending. Those, the vision that was seen, it's not a parade. God was not showing off what he is made of or something. That He's not showing off his angels. Parading up and coming down. He's not like that. But what he saw is what is going on. Angels that are going up are being replaced by those that are coming down. Okay? Similar to the Levites and the priests. That's why the parable of the Good Samaritan, the priests and the Levites, they don't want to touch the, the half-dead man because they will be polluted because they are going to the temple to serve. So, <clears throat> um, this is, this, these are the evidences of 
um, of uh, that it is Shabbat. Okay. Now, letter A uh, of the Bayatsi is the adoration for Adonai. Genesis 28, 16 and onward, And Jacob awaked out of his sleep, and he said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I knew it not. So you can see that he was already in reverent um, mode. And he was afraid. Actually, the word here is not really afraid. It's more of reverent. He was, he was revering God. He was not afraid like shaking like saw a ghost or something. He was revering God. That's the real Hebrew word there. How dreadful is this place. This is none other but the house of God and this is the gate of heaven. Um, Genesis 28, 18. And Jacob rose up early in the morning and took a stone and he had put for his pillow and set it up for a pillar, poured oil upon it, upon the top of it, and he called the name of that place Bethel, meaning house of God. Beth is house, El is God, is the singular for God. But the name of the city was called Luz at the first. Verse 20, and Jacob vowed a vow, saying, If God will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go, I will give uh, and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on, so that I can come again to my father's house in peace. Then shall the Lord be my God, and this stone which I have set for a pillar shall be God's house, and of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give the tenth unto thee. Now, <clears throat> adoration. Jacob understood what he saw. He saw what is going on. And he knows that he was in the place of the Lord, in his appointed time. And he gave reverence to the Lord by acknowledging it. He acknowledged that the Lord is God, that the place is the Lord's, okay? And at the same time, he also made an offering to him. He made a pillar, of course, and then he made uh, he gave his offering, which is the oil, and made a vow to him. <clears throat> now, adoration to the Lord um, requires a couple of things. One, we have to recognize that the Lord is God. We have to revere him. We don't take him for granted. We have to honor his day. His appointed time. We have to honor his place. And we have to give uh, what is due him. Now, the yardstick of testing, which is the why of the of Bayatsi, the total straight line between Beersheba, where he came to Haran is about 5,340 kilometers and 260.13 meters. That is a straight line. If you go a straight line, like straight, straight. The problem is the way is not a straight line. There is no straight line way unless you're in a plane, right? It has to be, you have to go with the curvature of the earth going around the obstacles and all, including the Jordan River. You have to find a way. And um, which is approximately 3,318.3 miles. This is the straight line distance. And so most of the time, the actual travel distance between Beersheba and Haran may be higher and may vary due to the curvature of the road. Okay. Now, an average walking speed on a flat ground, unhindered in a uh, cement, uh, clement weather, is about 2.3, uh, 2 to 3 miles per hour. That's, that is if we walk in a pavement and, you know, we keep on walking and we are, you know, healthy and all, about 4, four to 5 kilometers per hour. That is, you know, at a constant speed. But of course, sometimes you become slower as you go along 
you know, the rest of the day. It, it's only good for the first hour or two. After that, you become slower and slower because you get tired and or you have to stop some time. Now, even if we consider this speed and that distance, it will take five months to travel provided that Jacob will only travel in the daytime. Right? About eight hours to nine hours a day. Five months from Beersheba to Haran in a, in a straight line. But obviously, this is not the case, right? So however, the speed will be significantly reduced when walking in the desert dunes, plus the excessive heat of the sun during the peak of the day whereby you need to rest most of the time. From around 11, if you are in Israel, around 11 to about 3 or 4, it's so hot. You can't walk. You have to rest. You have to cover. You have to find somewhere to, to rest. And then you continue your, your, your trouble. Thus, your, your time, your time frame is significantly reduced. Not to mention that you're walking in a desert and, you know, your feet is getting stuck in the, in the sand. and then you, it, It's not an easy walk. But people, when they read the story, it's as easy as reading the story. But the reality is different. So, at least conservatively, it would have doubled his travel time more or less. So the five months could be about ten months to a year, walking in the desert. Okay? Now, <clears throat> Jacob, on his way to Haran brought nothing with him as supported by the following verses. One, he passed Jordan with his staff only. He got only a staff. Genesis 32.10. That was his prayer. He said, Lord, I don't deserve this. I, pa I came through this land, passing through Jordan with a staff in my hand. Now I am crossing back with two bands. Number two, his vow with God is for the basic necessity to survive. He was not talking about great wealth. He was talking about his safety. Why would he even talk about his safety? And food and clothing. Please open your Bible in Genesis 20, 28, verse 20 to 21. So that you can, you can understand what is going on. Genesis chapter 28, verse 20 to 21. <clears throat> okay? Genesis 28, 20 to 21. And Jacob made a vow saying, If God will be with me and keep me in this way that I am going, and give me bread to eat and clothing to put on so that I can come back to my father's house in peace. So why would you ask something if you have it? You ask something that you don't have. It's not obvious. You cannot ask for a wife if you have one already. You cannot ask for food when you're already tons of food. You ask with what you don't have. Right? The safety. Why is he asking safety? Was he in danger before? What he, was he asking for food? Where is his food? Where are his food? Clothing. Where, where are his clothing? And yet his prayer said, I only have a staff in my hand. What happened? Isn't he a rich guy, a rich kid? What happened in between? Nobody asked a question. Right? The problem is when Abraham sent his eldest servant to find a wife for his son Isaac, how many camels did he bring with him? Ten, full of provision. So you cannot just send one person with ten camels. You have to have ten persons per camel. Who will drive the camel? At least two. Maybe. So that somebody is like, 
you know, guiding the camel and at least one. Let's say one per camel. So ten men and ten camels. Why is Jacob, being the son of Isaac, who is a very rich man, sent him empty-handed? Where, in fact, he was sent in peace with blessing. I bless you, my son. Go and find a wife. And then bring this stuff and move on. Live by faith. <laughs> is that how it is? Something happened in between when he was sent and now when he was like praying with this kind of prayer. What happened? And obviously, it's not in Genesis. Because it's not meant for story. It's meant for lesson. It's meant for instruction. We have to seek the truth. Now, according to the sages, which they, you know, according to the Jewish sages, which they are using the book of Joshua anyway, when, when Jacob was sent to, to Haran, he was actually followed by the men of, e of Isu, his brother. As a matter of fact, being led by the eldest son of Isu. And their mission? To kill Jacob. So he was sent with blessing, provision, and all. Along the way, they caught up with him, and they are about to kill him. So according to the story, Jacob outwit his nephew by saying, Take everything, everything. Let me go, because if you kill me, my blood is in your hands. And we are blood relatives. But if you take everything that I have, so that's a lot of wealth, right? And let me go, I will die. if I die there, it's not in your hands. You did not kill me. Right? It's a fair deal. Who would survive a desert? He cannot come back because he will be killed. <laughs> the only way he can go is forward with nothing. So therefore, he is expected to die in the desert. That's how it is. That's why at some point he has to rest. He has nothing. That's why when he met God and he offered, he only offered what the small oil that he has. That's the only remaining that was not taken from him. Okay? So now the story makes sense, right? It's not like a story that he just went there. The third um, <clears throat> point that he brought nothing to Haran is that Jacob lifted up his voice and wept upon seeing Rachel. Why would he cry? Because he barely survived there. Almost a year of trouble, right? Barely, probably begging for food for the travelers, what have you. You know? And when the travelers go, by the way, they don't carry so much food. It's only enough for them. So he probably, you know, was able to get a piece, a little piece, piece meal from the travelers that maybe went along with him. That is provided they all went to Haran because it's a Mesopotamia. There's people go to, to uh, other places too, right? So he barely survived. And when he saw Rachel, he cried. Number four, Jacob has nothing to offer as a dowry for Rachel, unlike the case of Rebekah in Genesis 24.10 that has ten camels, full of goods in spite of the fact that Jacob was sent with blessings by Isaac in Genesis 28, 1 to 5. You were sent, he was sent to get a wife. Isaac knew the rule. You cannot go there empty-handed. Son, you know, you have to live by faith, go with your stuff in your hand, and get a wife by working seven years, okay? It was not planned like that. <laughs> the plan is for him to get a wife with a dowry and all. But everything was taken away from him. Now he has to offer his, his services. Okay? Now, here are the yardstick of testing, the tests for Jacob. Jacob, the death threat from Esau. It's a test. 
your brother, your twin brother wants to kill you. And as a matter of fact, there was already an attempt. Everything was taken away from him. He could have died in the desert. Number two, he was separated from his family and he was sent away. Just imagine, why am I being sent away, right? Because somebody wants to kill me, your brother. Number three, something happened along the way. That's why he got nothing. From being blessed to, to, to get a wife, now he got nothing. Number five, uh, number four, <clears throat> he offered to God what was left of him. There's nothing he can offer anymore. It, everything was taken. He doesn't even have food. Normally, he would offer something, right? If he got some lamb or goat or something, he would have like offered it, killed it, and burned it. He has nothing. Number five, the death-defying journey with no supplies or provision. In the heat of the day, imagine yourself as Jacob. <laughs> you know. Number six, enduring the difficult work and long period to pay for dowry. Seven years. He's going to work for seven years before he can get a wife. <laughs> That's long. That's, as a matter of fact, very long. <laughs> And yet, he did not complain, right? And he cannot even see the wife. He has to be in the desert to, to actually take care of the sheep. Can't even see the goods. <laughs> Number seven, the cunning and unfair treatment of Laban. Genesis 31, 41 to 42. So this seven yardstick of testing, Jacob endured. Yet, people are thinking that he was a liar. He was, you know, um, he did not feed his brother with, with food when he's hungry. You know, if you attended last time, you, you, you have known uh, my position on this one. It was not like that. Um, yet, in all this, Jacob never complained, but has been faithful to God. He never complained. Now, I want you to understand why, of all people, Jacob was able to have all his children saved. I mentioned this already, right? Adam got many children, got only Seth, well, including um, uh, Abel, but he died, right? He was killed. You have, uh, uh, you have uh, Enoch. At least two children were, were saved. One, Methuselah, and the other one, the wife of Noah. Noah got three children. He got only Shem, right? Abram got eight sons, only one saved, Isaac. Isaac got two kids, only Jacob was saved. Yet Jacob got 12 sons plus one daughter. The 12 sons are in the gates of heaven. Has the names of the gates of heaven, of the new Jerusalem. 12, 0, plus 1, 13. <laughs> Bonus, right? Why? Uh, because it's God's will. No, he, he must have done something that others did not. These are the things that he did. Okay? Now, endearment for Rachel, <clears throat> for the E of Bayatsi. Jacob worked works for seven years in order to marry Rachel. Genesis 29, 10 to 18, and verse 30. Number one, in verse 10, Jacob saw Rachel. So, <laughs> unlike Rebecca, although Rebe Rebecca was seen by Isaac after the fact, he, he was, she was chosen already. But Jacob saw Rachel. She's beautiful. She got a, he got a crush on her already. Right? So this is the endearment. We are in the endearment part. Jacob saw Rachel. Number two, Jacob kissed Rachel. It's not like kissed, kissed, but, you know, it's uh, the respectful kiss, right? Verse 11, Jacob displayed his emotions to Rachel. 
which is very unusual. You don't show your weakness to anyone, right? I'm Jacob, you know. <laughs> I'm the macho man. Remember Jacob, um, uh, in the story, if you, if you read the story, if you're familiar with the story, he was in a well that is covered by, the, by a big stone, that it is being opened only by men, strong men of the town. They put the big stone there so that not every traveler can just open it at any time. It has to be done with regulation by right people and all. And yet, when Jacob came and saw Rachel, he, opened the st he, he actually opened the well by himself. He is a strong guy. He is very strong, despite that he never really ate normal food and never drink normal, you know, and walk for like almost a year. He became strong. He was really strong. And yet, he cried in front of Rachel, showing her weakness and her emotions to the girl that he loves. And verse 8, and J Jacob loved Rachel. This is the endearment, right? Number five, Jacob negotiated for Rachel beyond the norm. If the price is right, he gave more than, more than right. That's how he endeared Rachel. Number six, Jacob served for Rachel yet another seven years. Because what was given to him was Leah. It was a trick, right? Because apparently there was a custom in Haran that a younger daughter cannot marry until the older daughter is married already. And remember, Jacob loved Rachel. The question though is whether Rachel loved Jacob the same way as he loved him. Because if she does, she could have told him about the rule. Right? There is a tradition that is going on. They cannot go around it. Then Jacob could have known already what's going on. Then he could have like, okay, uh, wait a minute, right? If I could have known that there is a tradition, then maybe the deal is off or maybe it can be rearranged in a different way. But apparently, everybody was silent. So Rachel is part of the connivance, unfortunately. Because... Rachel loved Leah, I believe, personal opinion, more than Jacob because they were twins as well. And she knows that Leah may be in a difficult situation to be sold because of her situation. So Rachel knew what's going to happen and she let it be. Okay? But the question now is, it's not about Rachel. It's about Jacob loving Rachel. Um, so Jacob served yet another seven years for Rachel. And Jacob also rebuked Rachel. Part of loving is rebuking when they are wrong, right? I rebuke whom I love. I discipline whom I love. That's what the Lord said. Because Rachel was like, Give me a child or else I will die. Like, why? Am I God now to give you a child? There are certain things that Rachel did. That's why the Lord cut off her life. Shorter than it should have been. Right? Did you realize that? Not to mention that uh, later on, um, you know, uh, somebody stole Laban's idol and she hid it and Jacob said, whoever has it must die. And it was with Rachel. Of course, it was not found, uh, you know, Laban did not find it in, in anybody's possession, but eventually the word of, of Jacob caught up with Rachel and um, and she died, right? And that's what she asked for anyways. Give me a child or I'll die. And on the second child, Benjamin, she died. <clears throat> the 
Now, I want you to understand what is going on. Like, seven years. Like, we see it as a, a love story of seven years. No, it's an economic thing. Uh, of course, it, it's long, right? But why? Now, we have to understand that during that time, workers are paid with barley. Under the code, that's the code, missing E. Ah, I think the E is there, E for endearment. So missing code of Hammurabi, under the code of Hammurabi, the maximum prices and minimum wages were fixed by decree and terms for apprenticeship were defined. Roughly 5,000-year-old cuneiform stone tablet in possession of the British Museum in London shows how workers were paid their daily rations in liquid gold. The tablet made around 3,100 to 3,000 BC, uh, which is, you know, around this time, uh, uh, was excavated from Uruk, an ancient city in Sumer, and later Babylonia, situated east of the present bed of the Euphrates River, depicts a human head eating from a bowl, meaning ration, and a conical vessel, meaning beer. There are undoubtedly several reasons why beer was so popular in Mesopotamia. So, um, Brother Eric missed this. The, the payment during the time for the workers is beer. So they are not given money. It's beer, all right? Um, now, oops, what happened? Okay. Now, during the second and the first millennia, which is about 2000 to 1000 BCE, the daily wage for an average worker is around a quarter of a bushel, which is around 8.5 liters of barley. So it's either beer or barley. Okay? While other ancient documents peg the daily wage of a worker was about 10 liters of barley. It depends on whom you're dealing with, right? Okay? Now, to understand this better, let us try to quantify it based on some ancient wage system. The Code of Hammurabi, the first of the great written law, law codes in ancient Babylon, had recorded the imposed rigid system controls over wages of people and commodity prices. According to this code, if a man hire a pasture for a cattle and sheep, actually there are many, but I just took the, the portion of the pasture because this is where Jacob is, right? Um, cattle and sheep, he shall give him eight gur of corn per year. So it could be corn, it could be barley, it could be beer, right? Now, if in Haran, during the time, pays the same as in the code of Hammurabi, which is most likely, Jacob would be receiving eight gur. The one gur is 8.59 bushels, okay? And the cost of, of one bushel is $3.68, which is about $252.89 per year, Okay? Now, that is his salary multiplied by seven years or a total of 1,770.23 as a dowry for Rachel. Now, it looks pretty much nothing during, you know, th that time, right? Um, um, eight gur of corn can feed the family for a year. So, <laughs> now we're understanding this, right? Um... And um, let us look at the minimum wage of a worker during Yeshua's time in Matthew 20, 1 to 16. A denarius, or a penny, was what an agricultural worker typically was paid for one day's labor. Uh, it, that is in Matthew 20, verse 2. If we assume a minimum wage of 10 hours, that would be uh, of minimum wage for 10 hours, that would be around $72.50 right? A day. The assumed working days of Jacob in a year is around 306. After factoring Shabbats and feasts, because we believe that he observed these things. Okay? That would be around 22,185 per year, times seven years. Thus, he paid $155,295 for Rachel in our time. Roughly. More or less, right? 
It's too much for a dowry. Don't you think, brother? How much dowry did you give? No, just kidding. <laughs> did he give any dowry? <laughs> just kidding. All right. Um, <laughs> maybe he owe you, eh? <laughs> okay. In ancient Hebrew, matchmaking. So now we're going to go back to ancient, okay? In ancient Hebrew matchmaking, the father of the groom would have, pay, would have to pay a price to the father of the bride, and it is called mohar. Okay? Now, other than mohar, a gift is also given to the groom, uh, by the groom to the bride, known as matan. So you have the mohar, which is the dowry, uh, which is the father of the groom paying to the father of the bride. Now, um, the matan is actually a gift to the wife. Okay? And this is an addition to mohar. The mohar was not always paid in cash. Sometimes it was paid in kind or in service. Now, the oldest actual Jewish marriage record that was discovered between Mibtachia, the bride, and Ashur, the groom, these are the names of these ancient people. They found it in, in a document which occurred among the Jews in Elephantine and Asuan at the southern border of Egypt shortly after their return from exile in Babylon. Okay, so it's about, you know, 400 BCE probably. Um, all the terms of the contract were written in detail. The groom paid the father of the bride five shekels for his daughter. So this is a record. In addition to the mohar, which is the dowry, the bride received 65 and one half shekel from Ashur. Okay. So only five shekels to the father. The bulk goes to the wife. So why do they do that? So that if you, if the groom did not like the bride and leave her, she has money to survive. That's how it is. It's fair, right? You took her from her father, now you defiled her, and now she's less of a value than before. She has to have something to make her live Unlike now that women can work before, they can't. So they have to have something to live on. <clears throat> now, based on the laws of Shekalim, according to the Maimonides, a half a shekel mentioned in the Torah, the annual tithe every Jew was required to give to the temple coffers is equal to 160 grains of barley, which in modern measurement would be approximately 8 grams of silver. Although it is impossible to know the silver's value in biblical time, based on today's rate, it is around $17 per ounce, and that would be around $5 U.S. Now, calculating from, the, from this figure, the wedding mohar or dowry by Ashur to his bride, Miss Takia's father, is around $50, equivalent on our time. But of course, the $50 at the time could be big already, right? And as for the matan, or a wedding gift to the bride, it is around $655. But the $655 at the time is big, right? So now, looking from that perspective, it appears that Jacob paid for the mohar of Rachel three times the value of the combination of mohar and matan. Overpriced. He paid overpriced for Rachel. And then he got Leah. <laughs> right? <laughs> poor, poor Jacob. Over anyway. Um, I feel bad for Jacob. Um, so he paid three times of the combination of both. Not to mention that Jacob's time is over a thousand years, you know, from the oldest record. Meaning they have more value during the time. What is worse, however, after paying for that excessive mohar, he got Leah and that infuri infuriated Jacob. He was told to work again for another seven years for Rachel. Thus, Jacob technically paid more than six times of what is normal and fair during the time. 
Now people will say, that's what he get for deceiving his brother and father. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> Given. The blessing, as we discussed last time, is we understand it as a ceremonial only. No, it's a ceremonial with big money behind it. Right? It's not a blessing from God that God will have no choice but to bless Jacob because the hand was given to, you know, it was taken already. It was nothing like it. This, the blessing that, that uh, Isaac uh, uttered before Jacob was a ceremonial blessing, meaning all his wealth will now be come Jacob's. If Jacob got it, then maybe, yeah, he stole it, right? Because it should have been his brothers. But Jacob got nothing. Even what was given to him as his due to actually get a wife was taken by Esau. Meaning he got nothing. So how can he be, how can he be um, accused of something that he never had? And yet people are accusing Jacob until today. That all these things that happened to him, he deserved it as a penalty for his deception. Wrong. It's not like that. No, but everybody is aware what is going on. Everybody was aware except Jacob. The marriage was done. He, he, indeed, he married Rachel, so he saw Rachel, but what was given to her, to him, Leah, and everybody knows it. Probably everybody's laughing already. That's why they're... Because it's, a, it's, it's not because of a deception, but because it's the, it's the tradition, it's the law of the land, that the, young, the oldest daughter has to marry first before the younger. It has to happen. So, but what is very interesting is that Jacob overpaid for Rachel. That's what it is. Okay? Six times. And unfortunately, I spoke with a lot of pastors and even theologians. They got it wrong. They think this is a penalty for Jacob for deceiving his brother. A crime that he never got. It's like you deceive someone of giving you a, a thousand dollars and you never did get that thousand dollars to begin with and you're being accused of stealing that one thousand dollars which you never got to begin with it was all words no 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 actual crime was committed okay and besides the blessing has to be given that's why the mother uh, Rebecca was anxious of giving it to Jacob because he already got the birthright the birthright is a responsibility. It's not a position that is like, you know, you, 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 you know, birthright. Oh, now you're the firstborn. Oh, big, 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 big deal. So what does it mean to, to be a firstborn? Meaning you are responsible for running the whole clan. You are responsible. The problem is the, the birthright and the blessing has to come together. J Isu was, was, you know, interested only of the blessing of the money and not of the responsibility. Now Jacob is stuck with responsibility with no money behind it. And yet people accuse Jacob. Right? And by the way, Esau got all the wealth of Jacob, of, es of Isaac. According to the story, he got it all. Because he'd been waiting... <laughs> Isaac doesn't die. It took him another 20 years or more to die. He, was, he became impatient. You know what? I'll take what is mine. He took everything, leaving his father and mother poor. And guess what? Who's sending them provision? Jacob was sending them provision, according to the story. So he still took responsibility because he got that birthright position. The right, the... the responsibility of taking care of everyone in the clan to make it survive, okay? Now, letter T of the Vayetzi, tricks of Laban. Laban took advantage of Jacob's situation. He knows that Jacob came with nothing 
and has no one in the land of Haran except them. Because of this, Laban made a one-sided agreement with Jacob, showed interest for, who showed interest for his daughter Rachel. He saw the potential of Jacob and his perceived gullibility because he doesn't know, right? And um, because Jacob appeared to be too much in love with Rebecca, with, with Rachel. It should be Rachel. Uh, sorry, it should be Rachel. When Jacob offered an excessive mohar for Rachel, Laban knew that Jacob would give anything for his daughter. If he can give this much, he knows he can give more. Okay? <clears throat> now, from the very start, he was planning to deceive him by giving Leah because it was his custom, it was their custom, to give the elder daughter first. Not to mention that Leah appeared to be a liability or not attractive enough to get a mohar as much as Jacob is willing to offer for Rachel. He planned it already from the very start of the transaction. No wonder Leah got the fury of Jacob because of her father Laban. That's why, you know, did you buy something that is not really worth it? <laughs> and how do you feel about it? You hate that thing. <laughs> right? Every time you see it, you hate it. Like, I paid $1,000 for this It's like, it's not worth it, right? So it's the same thing with, with Jacob in as much as he's a righteous man. He's also a man. He's also human. <laughs> Every time he would, did I pay three times? <laughs> Waited for seven years to get <laughs> what, I, what, she, what he doesn't even want. So of course, he, he did, it, it went to to reach to 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 lay it unfortunately that's why jacob never loved or you know kind of detested uh, Leah because of that jacob didn't want Leah to begin with never planned to have four wives he just planned to have one he he loved rachel and that's it rachel for for life but it didn't turn out to be that way. And he paid a mohar not worthy of her, at least in his mind. But of course, the Lord didn't like that. You know, when, when the Lord saw that Rachel is loved more and Leah is, is detested, the Lord is really fair and, you know, said, okay, so that's how you play, Right? Let me bless Leah. Did you know that six of the sons came from Leah? Six versus two. The other one, one each. You know. Well, that's, that's how it is. Actually, Leah got seven children, including the, the daughter, um, um, Dinah. And <clears throat> now... Tricks of Laban, um, okay. Laban did not honor his agreement with Jacob because he cheated him and changed his wages ten times. But God did not allow Laban to hurt Jacob. Remember, the Lord is fair and just. If you play unfair, <laughs> the Lord will, will be, you know, will be inter interfering. He will interfere. When Jacob was not treating Leah, was it Leah's fault to begin with, to be part of that? Of course she doesn't even want it. But she was forced into it. Now she's the victim and again victimized by the wrath of, of, of Jacob. Now she could be crying and the Lord, you know what, don't worry, I'll give you six plus one, seven, right? Now when it's the other way, Laban has been thinking that he can take advantage of Jacob, the Lord favored Jacob. And also, Laban uh, made Jacob to bear the losses of any flocks that were killed by wild animals or stolen by thieves. It's almost like you are a cashier, right? And something is wrong. It doesn't balance. You have to pay the difference. <laughs> you know? You, you have a minimum wage. And whatever is the difference, 
you have to pay for it. Then, then you way deep below the minimum wage, right? Because you have, you have to pay the difference. Somebody's stealing it, right? Uh, are you aware of what I'm talking? You know, you are a cashier. One of your fellow maybe stole something from it, or maybe the uh, you were tricked, or you were tricked by a customer, or what have you, right? And then you're supposed your sale should be say a thousand dollars, and in your cash you only have nine hundred dollars. Now you have to pay the hundred dollars difference, and your salary is eighty dollars. Now you did not you did not even earn a thing. You even actually have to give twenty dollars more. But Jacob has to bear all these things, right? Jacob worked relentlessly and tirelessly for Laban, and yet he was taken advantage in every way. <clears throat> also, Laban took advantage of his daughters because Laban was not planning to give them their inheritance, treated them as foreigners, taking advantage of them as he does to other people. He consumed their mohair, mohair and matan that should have been rightfully for them. Remember, the matan should have been the girl, so if, if the husband leaves, they have something to live by, right? Everything was taken away. <clears throat> the Z of the Vayatsi. So we're second to the last. Zing is defined as quality that makes something or someone exciting or interesting, among other things. Jacob has been showing a quality of character that is above and beyond any human beings, thus justifies as to why he was loved by God. He was not loved by God because God loved him, and it doesn't matter what he did. God just loved him anyways. Whether you like it or not, God loves you and has a wonderful plan for your life. Now, on the other side, if you're not on the list, um... God loves you, but you are not in the list, so you will go to hell. Uh, so, no. There is a reason why the Lord loves people. And we have to understand why God loved Jacob. Now we understand why he is being loved by God. And among the good traits of Jacob are as follows. Because if you want to be, if you want to be loved by God, the way... God loved Jacob, or even at least a small percentage of it, then we have to have a good or some percentage of what Jacob showed before God, right? <clears throat> Number one, obedience. Jacob was very obedient. He obeyed his parents to live for Haran. Genesis 28, 1 to 5. Are we obedient? To our parents. He obeyed God to go back to Canaan. He always obeyed. That is his character. Right? Number two. Oh. Obedience. Right? Do we keep God's commandments? <laughs> it's just obedience. Oh, it has been done away with. Are you obedient? That's the question, right? What if it is not done away with? Number two, reverence. Or with the only thing that he had. One to four. <clears throat> and he looked up and saw the rich putting their gifts into the treasury. And he saw a certain poor widow putting in two mites. So he said, truly I say to you that this poor widow has put in more than all. For all this, out of their abundance, have put in their offering for God. But she, out of her poverty, put in all the livelihood that she had. Jacob, when he met God in Bethel, gave everything that he has. He could have exchanged that for food later on, that oil, whatever it is. We don't know how big it is. But I'm sure it's not as big because... if. You know, if it is like, you know, Esau could have taken it. It could have been like just enough that it would fit into his body or to his pocket. But it might be an expensive one or something. Because remember, he came as a, as a rich kid, right? So that oil could be of value. But he gave that 
to the Lord. He gave what he had to the Lord. Just like this poor widow gave to the Lord. Um, number three, persistence. He endured a long journey with no provision. He, even though there's something that happened to him, he obeyed. Right? Even though there's no help, even though no provision, you were commanded to do this with or without support, you will continue to do so. That is Jacob. He persisted, even to the point of impossible. Can we survive this ministry with what we have right now? And yet we are continuing to do it. We could have folded a long time ago. And yet we, f we, we listen to God's instruction. We have to stand firm to the end. And we will, we did, and we will. Patience. Jacob is a very patient man. He waited for Rachel for seven years like days, for he loved her. How long can we wait the Lord? It will take like days because we love him. Noah waited for God for so long. Before the flood came, it was 600 years. <clears throat> Everybody waited. How long will you be patient? How long are we going to be patient to wait? Number five, honorable. He's very honorable. He kept his word by working for Laban for 20 years. He agreed. Okay. Even the first seven years, because, okay, given the first seven years, you know, he, was, he thought he was, the other person is also honorable. But by the time of, of the event, he knew that the other person is not honorable. And yet, he kept his word. Our obedience does not Stop when others disobey. Our obedience is not dependent on the obedience of others. We have to do what is right, even when others don't. You have to remember that. This is Jacob's. Number six, hard worker. He worked so hard, and he even bore the losses under his watch. He was hard worker. He, he loses his sleep. Because he was faithful in his work. And he was working for an evil man. And yet he was faithful in doing it. And number seven, and most especially, uncomplaining. He never complained in all those trials and difficult situations he went through. Not a word. Lord, you promised that you will bless me. That was 20 years ago, right? He never said a word like that. You promised my father Abram that you're going to bless me. Look, well, I am a, almost going to die. You know? He did not say a word. He never complained against God. Never complained against anyone. <clears throat> These are the qualities that Jacob has, but yet people can see other things that he did. They cannot even see the good things that he did. We have to understand why God loved Jacob. And these are, among other things, obedience, reverence, persistence, patience, honorable, hard worker, and uncomplaining. The last of the Vayetzi is the E, escape with great wealth. And the man, Jacob, increased exceedingly and had much cattle and made servants and men servants and camels and asses. In verse 10, I am not worthy of the least of all the mercies and all the truth which thou hast showed unto thy servant. For with my staff 
I passed over this Jordan, and now I have become two bands. Even when he worked hard, so hard for it, he still found himself not worthy of the blessing of the Lord. And yet, a lot of us has this sense of entitlement. I work hard, so I deserve this. And yet Jacob said, I work hard, and yet I don't deserve this. This is the kind of person that God sees from Jacob. That's why he was able to escape with great wealth. Because he is not your ordinary man. I hope and pray that uh, our lesson, the, the Parsha, by yet see, would have given you a different kind of perspective from what was such an ordinary story only. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Avinu Malkeinu, our Father and our King, we thank you, O Lord, for your word. We thank you for the Parsha Bayetzi. We thank you for Jacob, your servant, for showing us what kind of person he was, O Lord, so that we will also know how we can behave in this life and do what is right. And also be loved by you the way you love Jacob. Avinu, we thank you, O Lord, because you have chosen us from among the people and you have revealed yourself to us and not to the world. We pray, O oh Lord, that may continue to help us know your word, understand your will, and help us to walk in the path of righteousness, that path of life, keeping your word, keeping your commandments, keeping your Torah. And may you be magnified, glorified, and praised in our lives, in this ministry, and in the whole house of Israel. This we pray in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, our Adonai. Amen. So uh, let's also pray for, for the offering. Avinu Malakin, our Father and our King, we thank you, God, Lord, that you've blessed us, Lord, with, uh, with many different things, with health, with, uh, with money that we can use for our living, Lord. And as we share, Lord God, what you had blessed us with, uh, bless it, Lord God. Bless the tithes and offering, Lord, that it will be used, Lord, for the furtherance of your kingdom. And this we pray in the mighty name of Yeshua, our Messiah. Amen. <laughs>
Try to say in, uh, in uh, Hebrew this time. Gado Elohai Shiruki Gado Elohai Kolehad Gere Ki Gado Gado Elohai. They may come up and ask the Lord who is like you. They ain't come up a response with there is none like you. Yeshua said he's the way, the truth, and the light, and we are to have no other gods before him. In Kalohenu, in Kadonenu, in Kamalkenu, in Kemoshienu. Mi halohenu, mi halonenu, mi hamalkenu, mi kemoshienu. No de la lohenu, no de la donenu, no de le makalkenu, no de le moshienu. Baruch elohenu. Baruch Adonenu, Baruch Malkeinu, Baruch Moshienu. Atahu Eloheinu, Atahu Adonenu, Atahu Malkeinu, Atahu Moshienu. Ah. 
tahuse tero avonte nu le pane he ka e ke tore asami there's none like our god there's none like our lord there's none like our king there's none like our deliverer who is like our god who is like our lord who is like our king who is like our deliverer let us give thanks to our god let us give thanks to our lord let us give thanks to our king let us give thanks to our deliverer blessed be our god blessed be our lord blessed be our king blessed be our deliverer you are our god you are our lord you are our king you are our deliverer you are he to whom our fathers offered for you the fragrance amen let's now recite the blessing for the cup and the bread and the onyx the blessing over the bread baruch ata donai eloheinu melech haolam hamot silechem min haaretz Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, the King of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. Amen. We thank you, our Father, for the life and knowledge which you made known to us through Yeshua, your servant. To you be the glory forever. Even as this broken bread was scattered over the hills and was gathered together and became one, so let your assembly be gathered together from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. For yours the glory and the power to be a sure Messiah forever. Amen. <laughs> the blessing over the cup. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam bore prihagapen. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, the King of the universe, the creator of the fruit of the vine. Amen. Now we thank you, our Father, for the holy wine of David, your servant, which you made known to us through Yeshua, your servant. To you be the glory forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, receive your benediction. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and his sons, saying, This is how you shall bless the children of Israel. You shall say unto them, Yavarek ha-kadunai ve-yesmerecha, Yahiradunai panabaleka bikunecha, Yisahahahadunai panabaleka, Ve-yasem lecha shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his shalom. And they shall invoke my name upon the children of Israel and I shall bless them. Brothers and sisters, go in peace in the name of the Prince of Peace and the bread of life, Yeshua HaMashiach.